also, if you are a regular visitor to the water services recovery page at ashevillenc.gov slash Aline, and if you're not, you should be, uh, you will notice that as of a couple of hours ago, we have added a couple of things to do with our water testing and the plan that we have implemented since just after Hurricane Helene. And so I'm going to run through everything that's included with that. That's the home page right there of the water service recovery page. And at the very top where it says Helene recovery water quality, I'm just going to read what it says. Uh, water resources lab staff conduct daily testing at the source and throughout the distribution system for total coliform, E. coli, and chlorine to ensure the safety of our customers' water resources with guidance from the EPA and North Carolina DEQ developed and implemented a sampling plan specific to recovering from Helene. Most sample stations throughout our system are taps that go right into the water lines. All told, there are 184 sampling stations throughout the distribution system. On average, under normal conditions, 8 to 10 stations per day are tested. Since Celine, we have tested an average of 35 stations per day, and we hope to get that up to 40. Water resources in-house testing is slightly more accurate when the water is clear. And again, the water at North Fork, as everybody knows by now, is extremely turbid. And so as a result of that, we are sending samples to a third-party lab, and the turnaround time on those results is about 7 to 10 days. I know that sounds like a lot, but that's pretty much industry standard. Due to current conditions created by Helene, staff are currently testing for aluminum, iron, and manganese daily. Under normal conditions, weekly tests for aluminum, iron, and manganese are done at the source and on finished water from a faucet in our lab. Typically, results that indicate elevated levels of iron, manganese, and aluminum are extremely rare under normal conditions. To protect human health, federal government has set secondary maximum contaminant limits, or MCLs, in drinking water. Uh, we have a list of the MCLs for aluminum, for example, which is 0.2 parts per million, iron, 0.3 parts per million, manganese, 0.05, chlorine, 4 parts per million, which is what we normally treat at, 4 parts per million. But after Helene, uh, both EPA and North Carolina DEQ allowed us to chlorinate initially at 8 parts per million, since that was because that was the only thing that we could add to the water. Remember, we're not using our normal treatment and filtration systems or sending water straight out of the lake and hyperchlorinating it. Since then, however, we have dropped down to six parts per million. That's a very good sign because that means as we test for chlorine throughout the distribution system, chlorine levels are remaining high because there are very few pathogens in the distribution system as eating it up. So if chlorine remains high throughout the distribution, that is distribution system, that's a very positive sign. Uh, total coliform, we're allowed no more than five positive tests in a month. We have had zero since Helene. E. coli, we are not allowed a single uh, positive hit for E. coli because that would automatically trigger a boil water notice. And I want to be clear, that is not the reason we issued the boil water notice that we're under now. We issued that boil water, water notice because of the sediment that's in the water. If you've used the water or run it anywhere in your home or business, you've noticed that it's cloudy. It's brown in some places. That is why we are under this current boil water notice, not an E. coli positive hit. It's also important to note that we have had no detections of E. coli since Helene. A little context on the maximum contaminant limits. These limits are recommendations for water aesthetics. Obviously, clear water is more appealing. Cloudy water is not. Federal and state regulators do not enforce them. For example, the levels of iron and manganese in the unfiltered water that we've sent through our distribution system have slightly exceeded the MCLs. And, the, and our regulators are completely aware of that. They're at North Fork every day. They're in City Hall uh, in our offices every day. Uh, the practical effect of that being those with medical conditions who might be susceptible to increased levels of aluminum, iron, and manganese over a long period of time 
should simply consult with their doctor. Now, the impacts on water, things like aluminum, iron, and manganese have. Aluminum produces a cloudy look to the water. I know everyone has noticed that. Iron is rusty colored and causes a metallic taste in the water and produces reddish brown staining on toilets and other appliances. Manganese is black to brown in color, causes a metallic taste in the water and produces yellow staining on toilets and other appliances. It is also very important to note that the end reservoir treatment process that we concluded last week and that we will restart next week, it will actually work to reduce levels of iron and manganese in the water. Also important to add that we have not exceeded the MCL as far as aluminum yet. We know that level is going to go up next week when we start the second round of the end reservoir treatment process. And so that's why we're rolling out these real-time test results today. Right, let me click on the sampling plan. All right, so if you're on the website and you click on the link at the top that takes you to our sampling plan, the North Fork sampling plan for raw water and distribution system, again, uh, developed and implemented after Hurricane Helene in, in consultation with our regulators. Uh, to repeat, daily, we test for total coliform, E. coli, and chlorine. Uh, nitrate, we test for that weekly. The last test was done for that was done last week. We expect to have the results this week. Uh, starting this week, source water sampling for nitrate will be done once a week, usually on Mondays or Tuesdays. That weekly testing will continue until the normal treatment process is restored local lab environmental testing solutions and is analyzing those results. And there's generally a two to three business day turnaround on that. Cryptosporidium sampling kits have arrived. We generally test for that, I think, on a, under normal conditions on monthly, maybe quarterly, I'm not 100% clear. But we will start testing for that this week. Uh, those results will be sent to a lab in Indiana who will perform the analysis and their, their turnaround for the results for those industry, industry standard seven to 10 business days. Uh, to repeat, raw water testing at the source at North Fork and throughout the distribution system for total coliform, E. coli, chlorine, pH, and turbidity are performed every single day by our lab staff. Manganese will be monitored once per day until we resume normal treatment processes at North Fork. Usually that's a weekly test along with aluminum and iron. But since we're under some pretty extraordinary circumstances, we have decided to go ahead and test daily for aluminum, iron, and manganese because we know those can be elements of concern. Um, we have also, so with schools starting back soon, um, we've tested for lead at every school in the city and the county with the exception of Hall Fletcher I'm sorry, every elementary school in the city, in the county, with the exception of Hall Fletcher, who was in the process of switching their water service from the city to a well. There's a couple of stages of the lead testing process. Again, I mentioned we've tested every elementary school in the city and county with the exception of, Har of Hall Fletcher. Um, stage one has been completed. We've sent those samples off for analysis. There will be a stage two where we will go back again to every elementary school in the city and county, with the exception of Hall Fletcher, and test for lead again. Uh, as of October the 23rd, 21 of our 25 samples have been collected. We'll wrap that up this week. Uh, Cameron testing in Sanford, North Carolina is handling our lead analysis, and I've already received some of our samples. They will get the rest before the end of this week. And again, industry standard, we expect seven to 10 business days turnaround on the results. So I wanna click through. So I'm gonna click on distribution sample results here, and I'm not gonna go through the whole thing because it's a very, very big spreadsheet. And if you're like me, spreadsheets make your eyes cross. Uh, but it starts on October 3rd, which was about a week before we restarted uh, production at North Fork and goes all the way till today. And that will be updated in real time. Our lab techs have access to this. This is how they track the results. 
And so as soon as they update with new information, it will be available on the spreadsheet that lives at the top of our website now. Close that out. Now we'll go to the water sampling for the raw water at North Fork, meaning that is water right out of the reservoir. Uh, you have results for obviously E. coli, turbidity, pH, coliform, manganese, iron, aluminum. A lot of that testing didn't start until we started actually pushing water through the system. And again, we have not exceeded the MCL for aluminum. We have slightly exceeded the MCL for iron and manganese. And the boil water notice FAQ that's lived at the top of our website for a few weeks now, after the boil water FAQ portion, we added, if I can get to it, there it is, water testing frequently asked questions. And it goes through every question imaginable for aluminum, manganese, and at the very bottom, lead. It is a very lengthy document. I encourage everybody to read it. I know it's boring and it's lengthy and nobody has time for this to read the whole thing, but it is very, very important. There is very good information in there. Um, so that pretty much concludes my presentation for today. This is going to be, again, this is a living part of our website, so it will change as results come in and dates and deadlines pass and things like that. But I very much encourage you to make that um, a regular stop on your morning websites routine. I think it will be very helpful. I know you'll have questions after, but for now, I'm going to turn it over back to Mrs. Campbell.